Hi, this is Isabel Florence and you are listening to You Are Light Podcast, a safe space where we talk about mental health and well-being. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about perfectionism again, part two. Last week, we talked a lot about the fact that it doesn't exist, that perfectionism is an illusion, that a lot of what we see as perfect, people living the perfect life has been tailored to look like that, has been manufactured by these people. And we touched on the fact that perfectionism shouldn't be seen as something positive or a positive quality because it is rooted in self-hatred. Now, if we look at the society that we live in today, it becomes clearer why there are so many forces trying to um, make us believe that there is such a thing as perfectionism and that we should all be striving for it. If we are insecure, we will be motivated consumers because we will want to acquire the things that might complete us. If we feel complete within, then the beauty industry doesn't have to exist. Fast fashion would probably not exist. Consumerism would die down a lot. We would share the things that we need and we would get the stuff that is necessary for our lives. Or maybe that it enhances our existence in this planet a little bit, but the seeking of a seemingly perfect looking life would stop. It makes me frustrated when I see that there is a lot of um, manipulation in the wellness industry nowadays. When I became a health coach, I went through quite a few courses because I wanted to feel secure in myself that I could help people and I wanted to learn how to do it in the best way possible. And in a lot of occasions, I was taught to reach out to people and find their insecurity, find their pain, maximize that feeling, and then try to sell them the solution. And I think this is something quite dangerous because I will never be able to make a person feel perfect or feel whole forever. And no program, no retreat, no yoga class, crystal, deck of positive affirmation cards will ever make you feel like you have got it all together, like you have reached the best potential. The image and the feeling of I've done it all, I've healed it all, I'm perfect, right? And it makes me frustrated when I understand that there's a lot of people making a lot of money with this mindset of drawing out the insecurity of people, showing it back to them and saying, I can fix this. Nobody can fix anything for you. You can fix things for yourself, but you're always going to have something to work on. And if you didn't, then life would be so insignificant because that's the point of us being here is that we learn about ourselves. We learn about the people around us. We learn how to better ourselves every day. We change every day. And that is really beautiful. And we need to remember that. We need to remember because our society is constantly telling us that there is answers around us for our pain, for our suffering, for our traumas. The answers are not outside of us. The answers are within. We need to remember that. And nobody feels great all of the time. There's no such thing. I think there is beauty in the changeable experience that is life in the movement of emotions in your life. There is beauty in feeling sadness because it means that you are a human being, you are alive and you care. You have a lot of care within you. That is beautiful. So I wanted to remind you that if people are trying to sell you a lot of things to make you complete, search for that completeness within. And this is how I enjoy working with a client, making them understand that everything that they need is within. I always want to get to a point where they don't need me. I always want to change their mindset to arrive in the conclusion that they deserve kindness for themselves. So when it comes to well-being and when it comes to beauty, let's focus on finding the answers within. Let's focus on not looking for a perfect linear healing curve. 
Let's focus on looking at your body in what it is capable of rather than what it looks like. Reminding yourself that if you have stretch marks, it's because your body is changeable, it is malleable, it has grown, right? If you look at your legs from a perspective of this carries me everywhere this allows me to run and have freedom it can change the mindset of looking for a perfect image looking for a perfect feeling looking for a perfect life so how can you strive in your life to search within to better yourself without looking for that perfect image looking for that perfect life How can you strive in a healthy way with kindness for yourself? All you can do is be the best that you can be. Do the best that you can do. Being honest with yourself, being honest with the people around you. And that is all you can do. If you are a perfectionist and you're looking for creating something that will reach perfection, every project, every goal will seem huge a lot bigger than it might actually be. You will always want to make something better, so you're never going to finish it. You won't learn as much because you learn from the mistakes that you make. And you will suffer, you will have stress, you will have anxiety because you are looking for a standard that does not exist. It's impossible. It's also very natural that you will end up procrastinating a lot more because it will be too daunting for you to step into projects if you are looking for a perfect ending and not being perfect or not looking for that perfectionism means being a patient human being because things take time it takes time for you to learn things it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of trial and error but all you need to focus on is getting started and putting in the work little by little and doing your best You also shouldn't compare yourself as a beginner to someone who is a master at something. Now that we have the reach that we do with the internet, we are able to see people's work all over the world. It's very natural to compare yourself in your beginning stages of something to someone who has been doing something for 10, 20, 30 years. Because out of everything that you're going to see, you're going to look for the best. You're going to compare yourself with the best. And that's unfair because they didn't just arrive there by trying it once. It took them a very long time to get as good as they are. So give yourself that credit of allowing things to take time. When you have a goal, don't focus on the goal that you have of five years if you're a perfectionist because that can be too daunting. Focus on the steps that you can take today, the steps that you can take tomorrow. Done is better than perfect. Aim for putting effort into things rather than aiming for creating something that is perfect. And if you need to set deadlines for something, that can help as well because sometimes we get in this tendency of making it better, making it better, making it better, and it never gets to the end. It never gets published. It never gets shared. I know I have this tendency and sometimes I just have to get it done and release it, you know, let it go. (laughs) Things will never be finished, really. Because you as a human being are never finished. You will never reach a point of, oh, okay, now I am (laughs) complete. There's no such thing. There's always going to be something to work on. And you'll always have lessons in your life. So the things that you make will always change. If you are writing a book and... You always add another chapter when you learn a new lesson. The book is never going to be finished, is never going to be released. Release the book and start writing the next one. So we can break down larger tasks into smaller ones. We can focus on progress rather than expecting flawless results. We can challenge our thinking and challenge your belief when it comes to perfection. What does it look like to you? Where did that come from? Where did you learn that that looked like perfection? And how can you make it clearer to yourself that that doesn't exist? Is this belief realistic? 
we can be more compassionate with ourselves, more kind to ourselves. You do not have to achieve everything. You do not have to become the best version of yourself every day. You deserve to work hard as well as to rest. You deserve to be treated with kindness. Think of the things that you struggle when it comes to perfectionism and imagine your friend coming to you and saying, look, I'm struggling with this and this and that. What would you say to them? And let's try to embrace mistakes and failure a little bit more. I know this is really difficult. I struggle with it myself. But if you change your perception and look at it as opportunity for growth, if you look at the people that you really admire and take into consideration that they have failed sometimes in their lives, that they have made mistakes, it lowers the expectation within you. Challenge yourself in understanding where the shame comes from when it comes to making a mistake, looking foolish. Oh, you look, you look a little bit silly. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out, but you know, I've tried. That's better than not doing it at all. Adjust your standards when you need to. They might be too high at some points. You might be comparing yourself to a master when you're a beginner. Sometimes good enough is enough. It's good enough. <laughs> and do not get into a cycle of overthinking everything because that can be dangerous when you are a perfectionist. If you take too long to make decisions, your mind might get in the way trying to protect you from making a mistake. It'll say, well, I don't know. Maybe we should do it like this. Maybe I should do it like that. Maybe I should take more time with this. Don't allow so much time for a project that your mind will get in the way. Redirect your focus into just taking action and remember to celebrate every progress that you take. Celebrate your wins. It doesn't matter how small it is. Recognize that that progress is better than perfection, that you did it and that you're gonna continue doing it. And don't be too hard on yourself. You know, sometimes it helps, and I've spoken about this before, but sometimes it helps to bring a little bit of humor into the situation, to take the piss out of yourself a little bit and be like, oh, how silly am I that I am searching for something that doesn't exist, <laughs> that I have such a high expectation for myself when I've started doing this a week ago, a month ago, two months ago. Step back and look at the full picture. Are you being realistic? And just be kind to yourself. Just be lovely to yourself. Because if you are over worrying about something, it means that you care. There's a reason why you're overthinking. You're not taking the step. Because you care about it. And that's valid. And I want you, when you are struggling with perfectionism, to share that struggle. To talk to your friends, to your loved ones, to your therapist. They might show you how silly it is that you are putting such a high pressure on yourself. You might have a healthier perspective after talking to someone about it. This week, every time you have a thought that is self-critical and that is setting too high of an expectation for yourself, I want you to understand that this thought might be a bit silly that maybe you should push it to the side and not listen to it. All right. I hope you guys have a lovely week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. All the links are written down on the show notes as well as resources for anyone struggling with their mental health. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when we release new episodes. Also, feel free to share our podcast with your friends and family. And if you'd like to get involved, explore our content or support our work, visit our website www.ourlight.earth that's y-o-u-r light.earth also don't forget to follow us on instagram at u.r.light have a wonderful week and i'll see you next time